Okay. Hello, everyone. So in yesterday's session, um, I went ahead and started developing this course here, Programming for Analytics, um, which is a BSAN 300. And I started from scratch. But most of us, of course, will have these imported Blackboard courses um, that Ulet provided to us. And uh, I double checked this with Ulet yesterday because uh, I know I was I was mentioning what their intentions were for these courses, and um, I just wanted to to confirm it. And yes, as I mentioned, they said you know you could work with these BB import classes if you'd like. Um, you will need to modify them because they're already basically there from the migration. But of course, because it's a different system, and as I mentioned yesterday that Canvas uses the module uh, components that um, instead of the content pages like in Blackboard, things are going to look a bit different and uh, you'll have to do some adjustments. So, but you can do that and work with that course and then copy the entire thing over to your full course pretty easily. Right? And I showed that yesterday too, and I could show it again today. Um, so that's one way of doing it. And the other way is to do it, to take my approach, which is I just went right into the fall course and it was blank. And what I'm doing is I'm just building it from scratch. So I'm setting up my modules because I know they're going to look different than the way they did in Blackboard. And then I'm just pulling in the uh, content as I need it from my Blackboard import. Um, so you could do it either way uh, you'd like. <clears throat> um, and so I'm going to go ahead and continue doing it that way. So let me go ahead and click in my BSAN 300 course. So yesterday I showed how to build these pages. And I only built one page, although I'll probably build a little, a few more. And uh, the, the one page that I built was a welcome page. And I made this the home page. So when the students log in, this is the first thing they're going to see. And I have a link to my syllabus as well. And I also have a link. I put a link to the modules page. I'm not sure if I'll keep this or not, uh, but I just put it in here just to demonstrate that you can also link to any area within your Canvas course. Okay. Um, now, if you don't have a startup page like this, then by default, what's going to happen is when the students log in, they're going to go right to the modules page. Okay. So I set up some modules here. And um, all I did yesterday with the modules is I went ahead and put in these um, these headers because this is the way that I organize my modules. It doesn't mean this is what you need to do in your module. If you just wanted to post, let's say, assignments in one and quizzes in another, you can do that. But my intention is to have the students walk through the course week by week. And then when they go to that specific week, they know exactly what they need to submit for that week. Okay, and all my weeks are set up the same way. I have weekly objectives. I have readings from the book. Uh, sometimes I have slides, depending on the subject matter I'm teaching. I have some uh, assignments that we do in class together. They have homework that's due each week, and then they have a quiz. Okay, so that's how I set mine up. Um, now, if you have, if you're working from your Blackboard course, um, you will notice that inside of your, if, if you had quizzes in your Blackboard course, uh, you'll notice that they do appear in the quizzes area of your Canvas course. Uh, but I realized yesterday that the quiz that I pulled in, which I called chapter one and two quiz was actually empty. Um, so I, when I went to edit this quiz yesterday <clears throat> and I looked at the questions, the questions actually didn't carry over and I was thinking that may have been because um, I didn't copy over the um, question banks that I used in my quiz. Because in my quizzes, I have question banks, which in Blackboard, by the way, these are called pools. So if you set up pools of questions in Blackboard, they will come over to Canvas as question banks. So I went ahead and I brought over the question banks I know I use in quiz one, and our chapter one and two quiz, and my chapter one and two quiz was still empty. So it doesn't look like that was really the issue. 
it just seems like just having um, pools of questions inside of a quiz in Blackboard, unfortunately, will not keep the quiz together when it comes over into Canvas. So, um, so we'll have to rebuild it, but it's okay because I still have all my question banks. So it's just a matter of adding it to the quiz. It won't take very long. Okay, but before I do that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up assignments. And if we click in the assignments tab, this is where your assignments are going to be. Uh, now, it may look like this. If you did a manual import like I did, you may have a, a section that says imported assignments and it will show all the assignments you imported. Assignments also include quizzes. So quizzes you'll find in two places. You'll find under the quizzes link on the left and you'll also find it under the assignments quiz on the left. Okay. Uh, and if you set up your grade book in Blackboard um, to have different types of assignments, I know I did that. So in Blackboard, for instance, I set up my grade book to have in-class assignments, to have homework assignments, to have quizzes. If you set up your grade book like that in Blackboard, then in Canvas, what you're going to see on this assignments page are these different groupings based on what you did in Blackboard. So that's pretty nice that it actually keeps those assignment categories and it brings it over into Canvas as groups. Since I'm starting from scratch and I imported an assignment, it created a group called import assignment. So it didn't exactly put it into the assignments group. This assignments group is the default group that you're going to have. Right? And that may be the only thing you see. Okay, but if you did set up the categories in your Blackboard gradebook, they will come over as groups here in, in Canvas. And actually all the assignments should be categorized under those groups too. Okay, so that's a pretty nice feature of that migration. Um, but I'm, again, I'm, I'm starting from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to build, before I even create any assignments, create any quizzes, I'm gonna start building my groups. Now in Blackboard, if you had categories, you'd have to do all that through the gradebook. Okay, so the gradebook has that functionality. It's not that way in Canvas. In Canvas, there's really not much you need to do with that gradebook. Um, you can do everything through this assignments page in terms of, setting up your assignment categories and deciding how much uh, percentages each category is going to weigh. Okay, so that's probably the first thing you may wanna do if you do use assignment categories in Blackboard. Okay, oops. Oh, I'm losing the chat here. Um, okay, I think I have to stop sharing to bring it up, I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. And let me share again. This is a little bit of a bug, I think, with Zoom. If you share your screen, you lose the chat. Okay. Uh, so we'll ask, can you drag the quiz? Yep, you can do that. Right. That's what you can do. Yep. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Just grab the six dots here to the left and click and just drag it up and just place it right in there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and set up my assignment groups. Okay, uh, you can open it up. Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I did, Will. But I noticed that if the chat is open, this happens to me. I don't know if this is, um, I'm sidetracked a little here, but I, I, this happens to me. I don't know if this happens to everyone, but if I have the chat window docked on my Zoom window and then I share my screen and then I try to bring up the chat in a separate window, it never comes up and I have to stop sharing, undock the chat, share my screen again, and then bring up the chat. And that's when I get it in the, uh, in the, in the separate window. So it's kind of a weird thing that happens with me in Zoom. All right, so now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna now start creating my assignment groups. So in the assignments um, page here, if you click on the plus group, this will add an assignment group, okay? So like I said, I have a, I have a group of assignments that I use in my, uh, during class. I call them in-class assignments. So I'll go ahead and create a group called in-class assignments and I'll hit save and here it is. Okay. Then I have another group that I use called um, uh, homework. Whoops. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Go back. Let me go back to add group and I'll put homework in here and I'll put the homework assignments there and I'll add another one called quizzes. 
and I'll add another one called exams. And since I already have a quiz here, I'll just click and drag this, put this in quizzes. Okay. I don't need the imported assignments anymore, although it'll probably create it again if I import more, but you could just delete it for now. And even the main assignments one, I'm going to delete. I don't need that group either. This is the one they give you by default. Okay. So here's my, um, here's my four groups. And now what I can do is I can set up the uh, weights for each of these groups. So to do that, I'm going to hit the menu button here, which is the three dots. Okay, to the right of the assignments button. And I'm going to say assignment groups weight. Okay, so we click assignments groups weight. And then we check the checkbox. This is weight final grade based on assignment groups. And what I do is for the in class assignments, I give 10%. Right. So as long as they come to class and they submit what we do in class, they get 10% uh, there. Uh, the homework and then everything else here, I'll just make 30% each. All right, so the homework is 30, quiz is 30, exams 30. And then that adds up to 100. And that's all you need to do. And then, and then it will show you how much of the total it is here. And the nice thing about this is um, um, it automatically calculates in the grade book, right? So this is really all I would need to do in terms of the grade book because every time Right, I put a, uh, an assignment in one of these groups. So for an I, for instance, if I create a homework assignment and I put it in a homework group, then um, what will happen is when the student completes that homework and it's graded, it then will be factored into that 30% of their grade automatically. Okay, so this is a really nice feature. This is one thing that I think Canvas does much better than, than Blackboard. I mean, Blackboard, of course, you can do this too, but it takes a lot of modification within the grade book to get this done. You have to, you know, go in and add to categories and they don't make it very intuitive. Canvas, I think, did this part right. Okay. All right. So now what I can do is I can create an assignment. Okay. So to create an assignment, I'm going to hit the plus assignment button. Okay. And the assignment um, you create, right, will have a name. And I'm going to call it, let's see, for the grade book count, an uncompleted assignment as a zero. Yes. So um, when you create an assignment, uh, Will, what you can do, and I'll get, the, I'll get down to this area, but there's actually um, where it says displayed grade as. If you say complete and un incomplete, um, when you grade it, you grade it as either complete or incomplete, completes 100 and incompletes a zero. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do for this assignment here. Yeah, I, I don't know if Blackboard had that. Yeah, but this does. This does. And, and that's how I'll do this one. So so every every day in class, um, the students come in to my class and, and we work on some exercises. And at the end of class, I will say, um, submit your code, right? And, and, and then I'll give them a complete or incomplete. And, you know, it's sort of an incentive to come to class. It's, you know, sort of an attendance, you know, grade, if you would, and uh, they get graded based on what they do in class. So if they show up late and they don't really submit anything, then I'd make that an incomplete. Um, so that's how I'm going to set this up now. Um, notice, did not count this time button below the grading category. Uh, only time it won't count. I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. So I'm going ahead and uh, I'm going to schedule an in-class assignment for 825 and I'll call it chapter one, uh, lecture one. And I'll just put here, um, submit your code from today's class. Okay, that's my instructions. Notice the instructions, by the way, is that rich content editor that we used when we built our welcome page. It has all the same features. You can, you know, attach media files, images, 
links, right? everything you can do with that rich content editor on, uh, that I did for, for pages, you can do here too in your assignment. And then the points here, I'm gonna put a hundred. Okay, here's the assignment group. So if you created an assignment group like I did, you'll see them all right here. If you didn't create the group and you said, oh, I, I meant to create it and I didn't, well, you could just do it right here too. It lets you, this is what I was saying yesterday. The great thing about Canvas is it, there's several ways to do the same thing. So if you missed it in the, in the assignments uh, page, you could go ahead and do it right here on the fly. So that's nice too. And I'm gonna do the complete incomplete um, that, that Will asked about. Uh, you can also do points or percentages or letter grade or you know what have you. Um, but the complete incomplete, when you grade it, if you could grade it as a complete, it will get the full number of points. And if you grade it as incomplete, it will get a zero. Uh, you can check this do not count toward final grade, which means it will not be calculated in that 10% that I set up for that particular group, um, but I am gonna count it. All right, the submission type here, you can do actually any type of submission. So even if this is no submission, you know, if you just, for some reason, you wanna give a student a grade for just about anything, um, but they don't need to submit anything, you can do the no submission, or, or let's say you're collecting the assignment on paper. Uh, you could still, you know, um, this is almost the same thing, like they're not submitting anything through Canvas, but when you grade it on paper, then you can say complete or incomplete and still record it in Canvas. Uh, but anything that, you know, they submit, at least in my classes, will always be online. Uh, so you could do like a text entry, which is what I'm going to make this, which means that they're just going to, like I said here, insert, uh, submit the code from today's class. They'll have a little text entry that they'll to copy their code into and then hit the submit button. But you can also have a, what URL, a media recording, a file upload, right? So if they're submitting a paper, let's say this is a paper assignment and you want them to submit a Word document or a PDF, they could click the file up, you could click on file upload and then they'll have to upload a file. Okay. Then you can do allowed attempts, uh, you could do unlimited, or if you do limited, you just tell the number of attempts that you want to, to show. Uh, typically with the in class, I may just do an unlimited because maybe they'll have a, maybe they'll have a problem. They'll hit the submit button without pasting their code or something like that. So I'll say, okay, well, you could just go and submit it again. That's fine. Uh, you can do group assignments too. I'm going to show how to set up groups. Uh, student, this is student groups, and I'll show you how to set up student groups tomorrow. It's fairly simple. But um, if you want to assign a group project, you can go ahead and make this a group assignment. Peer reviews is nice. I've, I've never used this, but I'm teaching an FSEM in the fall. I'm thinking of doing this for my FSEM class so students can actually uh, review other students' work. Um, so you can click on that. And then you can manually assign it or have it automatically assign peer reviews. So that's a nice feature too. Uh, Chris used to, okay. Tila, how to take the work has to be PDF. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Okay, and so how about a Word doc? Because I know you could do annotations with Word docs too. Or does it have to be PDF? We've used it before. Uh, the reason we say PDF is, is for some reason it just works better. Um, for the yeah. annotations, not for the student who's doing them, but when you're now looking at them after the annotations, okay. it, it just aligns better and things work better. Uh, okay, them. that's good to know. Um, what I was thinking is for my FSEM is to do the text entry and just have them do maybe small writing assignments each day. Um, and hopefully they could peer review that. Would that work? I mean, it does give you the checkbox with the text entry. So I'm hoping well, yeah, that- Definitely it does. It, okay. it will, if, if they do it as a text entry, it will send it to them as a PDF. But if you do say the file upload, you can send in a Word document. It would just be better as a PDF we found. Okay, so. all right, thanks. Um, graders can have used student names. Uh, this was also a feature in Blackboard, right? So if you wanna just grade the assignment without seeing which student you're grading, um, you can check that. So, and then this is the assign area where you just, you know, assign it to everyone in the class or sometimes you'll have a student that maybe they were out and you want to extend it for them. Um, and you can 
to pick a particular student um, from that course and just assign it to them on a different day if you need to. Okay, so that's nice. And you would have to add a second assign uh, area if you were to do that. So maybe you'd want one where you assign to everyone and then another one where you would add and assign only to one particular student. Okay. And that's it. And then you could either save it or you could save and publish it. Again, if you just save it, the students will not see it. Okay. But if you save and publish it, then they'll see it after. Okay. Now, I, this is just a summary of, of the assignment. I didn't actually put a due date or anything like that. I probably should have. Um, but if we go into the assignments area, here it is. Okay, now notice it did put it in in-class assignments. One thing you have to watch out for if you create the assignment groups, um, if you didn't select a group from the assignment, then it will just put it in the first one. But since I selected the in-class assignments, that's where it puts it. But anytime you create a quiz or an assignment, it's a good idea to come or a homework or what have you. It's a good idea just to come back here, make sure everything's in the right area. Um, because otherwise it could be calculated in a different group and it won't be calculated correctly for the final grade. So I always like to come in here just to make sure everything's in the right place. And if it's not, it's just a matter of clicking and dragging it to the right place. Okay. Um, and that's it. That's it in terms of assignments, whether, you know, if the assignments you're building um, in class assignments or homework assignments, um, that's really all there is uh, to that. Um, now, most of my assignments actually come from MindTap because I use that third-party learning platform from Cengage. And I'm gonna show you in a bit how we could import assignments from there and add those to our uh, assignment group in Canvas. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna jump into the quizzes because my quizzes are also from, uh, from Canvas. Okay, so um, uh, so again, I, I created a quiz yesterday. I called it Chapter One and Two Quiz. Um, I think what I'm going to do, since it's just a blank quiz, I'm going to just create a new one. Okay, and to create a new quiz, now again, I'm in the quiz area here on the left. I'm going to click the plus quiz button here. Okay, now it comes up with this choose a quiz engine. This is a bit confusing. Um, with Canvas, the quiz engines. There's classic quizzes and there's new quizzes. Now, again, I, I don't really know the history behind this, but my guess is that um, they have a new uh, format for their quizzes or a new, a new tool that they use to create quizzes. And they added that and they said, but we still want to support the old quizzes because it's, 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 they're two completely different engines. Um, so they have both in here. Now, the quizzes that get imported from Blackboard are like classic quizzes in Canvas. And all of those quizzes that got imported will be classic quizzes in your migrated course. OK, so and classic quizzes pretty much has everything that new quizzes has. Um, so if you're really familiar with Blackboard, you may just want to go with a classic quiz. Uh, it doesn't say that they're going to phase out the classic quizzes anytime soon or anything like that. So, you know, it's up to you which one you want to use. Um, if you click on to learn more about the differences, and I think this actually overtakes the tab. So I'm going to open it in a new tab. Um, this is a pretty nice page that kind of shows the difference between the classic and new quizzes. And you can see there's really not much difference here. Um, now, I've only used classic quizzes, but there are a couple things that I find interesting with new quizzes that makes me want to use it. And, um, and I'll show you uh, what I mean. Um, okay, so here are the features. I mean, you can see even here the features. It looks like classic quizzes even has more features than the new quizzes, right? There's not as many check boxes on that right hand side. Uh, okay, but these are the question types here that I was talking about. So all the main question types you're going to see in classic that you would see in new quiz. New quiz, again, takes a different approach. It's a little bit different of how you build them, um, but still you get the same end result. There are some question types that they did add for new 
quizzes like categorization, um, which I've never had a use for, um, ordering, and something called hotspot. Uh, but other than that, everything is, is the same. Um, but there are a couple things, like I said, that intrigue me about the new quizzes. One of the things is that, where did I see it? It has to do with um, setting up exceptions for students. So for example, if you have accommodations, uh, and I'll show you how to do this in a bit. If you have accommodations, so if you have a student that needs extra time on a quiz, um, if you have a classic quiz, you have to go and set that up for each quiz. So if you give eight quizzes a semester, you'll have to remember, okay, I got to go in eight times and give this student extra time on each of these quizzes. It says here somewhere, if I can find it, that um, for new quizzes, it actually applies to the whole semester. Um, and I wish I can't find it somewhere here. Maybe someone could find it. Here it is. The grading and moderation add extra time individual student for the whole course. And see, this is only on new quizzes. So this is pretty nice. Again, I haven't used it. I haven't used the new quizzes, but this was the one thing I saw where I said, oh, this may be a reason to use new quizzes because now I can just, according to this anyway, I can add the extra time for the student and it will apply to the whole course rather than have to go in each assessment and do it separately, okay? So that may be one of the reasons why you may say, you know, I wanna do new quizzes. Um, the other thing that I noticed personally is my quizzes, I, uh, I use essay questions. And the, if you use essay questions on your quizzes in Blackboard, there's a section in Blackboard where you can put the correct answer. And maybe you may want to show that to the student too, so they can see really what the correct answer you were looking for for that particular essay. Um, I do not show the student the correct essay answer, but I like to keep it in Blackboard because when I grade, I like to refer to it right, and compare it to what the student wrote. The problem is when my courses got migrated over to Canvas, those correct answers that were in my essay questions in Blackboard were gone, okay? So hopefully I did have mine backed up. Hopefully you have your correct answers backed up and you don't only have them in Blackboard. Um, and, and Canvas handles correct answers when it comes to quizzes in the classic quiz a little bit different. You can put the correct answer in there, but it always shows to the student. So you don't have an option to say, don't show them the correct answer when it comes to an essay. In the new quizzes, you do have that option. But the problem is, like I said, when the quizzes came over from Blackboard to Canvas, they were automatically classic quizzes. So. Can you lose a uh, classic quiz? Uh, no, Gail, I, I don't think so. Um, there's no way to do a conversion to say, I'm gonna take this classic and make it a new quiz because the way that they create the questions are completely different. So they're, they're not compatible. I, I can look that up just to make sure, but from my experience, I wasn't able to do that. Okay. So, so anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create the classic quiz. And you can click on this checkbox if you don't want this to come up anymore, uh, this pop up when you create a quiz. Even if you do click that checkbox and you decide to change it, you can. Uh, yeah, it's even any extra time. That's true. Yeah, and I and I mean to go in there was was a real pain each quiz that I gave, um, but again, I'm going to look that up though, Gail, before I give you a definitive answer. But I, just from my experience, I didn't see a way to do that. All right, so when you create a quiz, it's going to be the interface is is the same as an assignment. You're going to put the name of the quiz. So I'll just call this quiz one, and then here's the quiz instructions. And usually, I just put a little description of of um, of the quiz and I give a little, I put a little rubric in there as well. Um, but I'll just leave that blank for now. Okay, then we have the quiz type. 
Um, what's nice is you can do practice quizzes. Practice quizzes are um, quizzes that are not graded. Um, so they don't get factored into the final grade. So if you want to just do a practice quiz where they take it and they get a score, but it doesn't go into the grade book, you can choose that. And then they have an ungraded survey. I've, I've never worked with the surveys, but again, the ungraded survey and the practice quiz do not go into the grade book, but the graded quiz and the graded surveys do. Okay, I'm gonna make that a graded quiz. Here's the assignment group here. Okay, I'm gonna put that under quizzes. You can shuffle the answers if you have um, a multiple choice, uh, you give a time limit. Okay, you can allow multiple attempts like you can on an assignment. And if you do click that, um, you can decide um, the number of attempts you want to give them and also which score to keep the highest, lowest or average. Um, okay, this is where you have to be careful if you use essay questions like I did. It says, and, and if you're in a classic quiz, it says let the student see quiz responses. Incorrect questions will be marked in student feedback. So do you want the students to be able to see their responses, what they responded? Um, I would think most of the time, yes. So you could keep that checked, but then it's okay. Well, when do you want them to see it? Only once after each attempt, meaning when they hit the submit button and they get, and they see, maybe you have a auto graded multiple choice question. They hit the submit button. Do you want to see their answers that one time? And then if they go back into it, they can't, or every time they go into it. So um, that's what that checkbox is. And then here, this is the one, let students see the correct answers. So maybe you may not want this, especially if students are taking quizzes at different times, or you, know, you don't want a student to say, I took it already, here are the correct answers and send it to someone else. So you may want to uncheck that, or maybe you want them to see the correct answers, but only after everybody's taken the quiz, and then you can put specific dates on when you should show and hide the correct answers. This again is what you have to be careful for, for the essay. What I found is classic quizzes essay. If you put in a correct answer, whether you check this or not, the student will still see the answer. The reason is because, and I'll show you this in a second, when you're dealing with essays, they don't actually, they have a little area which is not exactly a correct answer area. It's more of a feedback area. So they don't see it as a correct answer. Um, if you use a new quiz, you do have correct and incorrect answers for essays. So for new quizzes, that would work for, for classic quizzes, it won't, okay. Show one question at a time. So this is, again, Blackboard had this, right? You can go from question to question or you can just have all the questions there at one time. You can require an access code. So, you know, if you wanna make sure everybody starts it at the same time and that they're in class to take it, uh, you can just click on that and just put in a pass password or a passcode that they would have to put in to access it. Filter IP addresses, this has to do with um, if you want them to take it in a certain location. So if you have a lab for a computer lab, for example, and they must take it in this lab, well, each computer is part of a network group that has a have IP addresses that can be that you can filter by. Um, this you'd have to, of course, contact IT to say, can I please have the IP address group for this particular lab, and they can give that to you. Okay, and then the assign to is just like the assignment. You know, if you wanna, if you need to reschedule it for a student, you can add a different assign area and just assign it to that student for that time. Okay. If I just want to record test grades, can I add a column and wait to the gradebook, or do I need to add turn in on papers? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so if they're not taking an actual quiz, Will, I think what you're asking is um, if like if they're taking a paper quiz, but you still want to put it in as a quiz, is that what you mean? I mean, if that was the case, then probably what you want to do is just make it a regular assignment and do, like you said, the turn in on paper. Yeah, that's what I would do. But then also remember you want, and that's the nice thing about the categories, categorize it still under a quiz. So then this way it will get calculated if you have it weighed differently. Okay, the gray book is only populated through assigned quizzes. Right, you need to create this, that's right. 
Good. Thanks, Chris. Uh, another thing is what I do is um, I actually give an access code for my in-class assignments because I want to make sure the students in class when they do the in-class assignment and the assignment doesn't have, if you noticed, didn't have that, um, that access code um, option. So I actually make my in-class assignments quizzes. So this way I can have put an access code on it and then I categorize it inside of in-class assignments. Uh, the assigned to for bonus civic uh, bonus right, as you can choose them individually. And get, that's good, yep, that's a good point. Thank you. All right, okay. So that's it. Now, th there's another tab here called questions. This is where we're going to put our quiz questions. Okay, we click on this. Okay, so now we can add our quiz questions. Okay. Now there's three ways you can add quiz questions. And these are the three buttons here. If you're just adding a question that everyone's going to get, okay, you just click on new question. And you can put, you know, call it a name, question one. And these are all the different question types that you can put in here, okay? And this is really what's different between that classic and new quiz. The new quiz, as I mentioned, they have a few more question types and even the question types that are the same, they're constructed completely differently when, when you're building your quiz. And that's why I was saying, Miguel, I don't think you can actually just convert one to the other, but I'll check on that anyway. Um, but let me show you. So this is the multiple choice. So if you want a multiple choice question, um, you put in your question here. And then notice you can choose a correct answer and you can put in all of the options you want to put in here, right? So this is answer one. Okay. answer two, okay, so on and so forth. And then you can also put in these comments and see how it's highlighted in green. So this one you can put like feedback, right? Correct, it's right? something like that if they answer it correctly. Okay. And this one you can put maybe, you know, incorrect. Right, and the correct answer is, or you know, maybe give an explanation of, you know, what the correct answer is. So this is what they would see, right? If they were to choose this and get it wrong, or if they chose that and get it right, they'd see correct. Okay, and that's basically that's a multiple choice, and you know, true and false is the same thing. Okay, it looks like they car carried over my comments from the multiple ch choice. Um, Fill in the blank. What's nice is if you do like a fill in a blank, um, it should, let's see, answer your question text and define all possible correct answers for the blank. Uh, students will see the question followed by a small box. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly how to build a fill in a blank. I haven't done that before. Um, I know in Blackboard, they had a specific um, uh, text that you had to put in for the blank. I'm not sure what it's like in Canvas. You fill in multiple blanks. Oh, here they give you an example to fill in multiple blanks. Type of reference word, no spaces surrounded by brackets. Yeah, so there is a particular format that you would have to put, fill in multiple blanks, right? But whatever the case is, notice you have possible answers and they're in green. Um, but when I click on essay, this is my problem with the new quiz. Um, It gives you this little box here. And this is not an actual correct answer box. Notice it doesn't have the green around it or the red. It just says general answer comment. So this is what I was talking about. So if you're like me and you say, you know what? I like to put in the correct answer because when I grade it, I like to compare it to what the student's writing based on my answer. Um, but I don't wanna show it to the students. That's really not an option here, unfortunately. Okay, if you put in the answer, uh, if you put in the, the answer here in the comments, you will see it when you grade it, but the student will also see it when they get the results back. Okay, 
So just be careful about that with, with essay questions. Also, and I'll show you this in a second. If you copied over from Blackboard, if you had a correct answer for your essay in Blackboard, it doesn't show up in comments. It's gone. Okay, so you'll lose your correct answer if you don't have it backed up somewhere else. Um, so anyway, so that's that's how you would create a question. And you just say update question. And here it is. So this is the first question on my quiz. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull in the questions that I had in Blackboard. So what I did uh, before this class, and, and, and I did this yesterday, but I'll just show you again, because you'll probably be using this feature a lot. If you go to the, oops, I didn't save. I didn't save my quiz. I may have lost it. I didn't hit the save button, but that's okay. All right, well, if you go to the home screen and if you say import existing content on the right hand side, you can import, for, you can do copy a Canvas course, choose your Blackboard import, select specific content, okay, import, and then click on the select content button. And now what you can do is go to your question banks and it should have, now the nice thing about the question banks is it even shows your quizzes. So if you had a quiz with 10 questions, let's say, that would become a question bank. Or if you had pools of questions like I did, uh, they will show up too. So I have some pools of questions because what I do on my quizzes is I choose, I have three variations of each question and it pulls it by random. So this way each student hopefully will get a different quiz. Um, so before class, what I did was I went ahead and chose chapter two, question one, and I chose chapter two, question two. Unfortunately, it's not very, or it doesn't show it in order. And then chapter two, question three, I selected that content, okay, and it imported. And once you've done that, when you go into, now it may take a little while to complete, but once it's completed, if you go in back into your quizzes and you click on the three dots up here, okay, to your main menu, if you go to manage question banks, you'll see all the question banks that were imported. So these are the three that I imported. Okay, now I can use these and put these on my quizzes. So if I go to the chapter two question one bank, Right, it shows me all of my, uh, the three questions that I choose at random for that one question. Um, and notice, right, it's, an, it's basically an essay question. So in my class, what they have to do is write this program and then put their code in, in Canvas in the text area. But I always in Blackboard put my code, right, my solution. And notice it's not here anymore. So this is what I mean. This is what I mean. If you had a correct answer in your essay, it, it, it's gone, um, unfortunately. But fortunately for me, I've had them all backed up. So I, I didn't just have it in Blackboard. Um, so anyway, so these are, these are my question banks. Okay. And you can create a question bank too from here if you wanted to. So if you say, you know, I want to create a new question bank which again is a pool of questions that we did in, we had in Blackboard, you can do that here. Okay, but I'm going back to quizzes and I'm gonna click on my, so it looks like they saved my unnamed quiz even though I didn't click save, that's good. Okay. Oh, but notice it didn't actually save it. I still have to put in the quiz one, graded quiz and put in quizzes, okay. And now I'll go to my questions. Oh, it did save my essay question though. That's interesting. So it didn't save my settings, but it saved my question. Okay, good to know. Okay, so now the question is, okay, well, what if you do have question banks like I have, and you wanna choose a question at random on your quiz? Well, you would have to put it inside of a question group, okay? So there's a few ways you can do this. Since I already have the question banks backed up, I'm going to go into find questions. Okay, if you click on find questions, you'll see your question banks here. What's very interesting about this dialog box 
is even though I didn't see my question banks from other courses when I went into question banks in this course, when I click on find questions, I see all my question banks from BSAN 398, which I taught this summer. So um, you'll, for some reason, they put all the question banks in this dialog, but you can't, if you go to view your course question banks, you only see the ones in your course. Um, but anyway, so here's my chapter two, question one. And you have to select all the questions you want to be in that question group on your quiz. And you also need to create the group here. Now, if you notice, there was a new question group button in the middle. You could create the question group first and then pull the questions in from your question bank, or you can do it right here as well. So I'm gonna do create group and the group name is gonna be, um, since I already have a question one, I'll call this question two. And I wanna pick one of the questions out of the three. Notice it says three selected so far. So I wanna pick one of those and I'm gonna give this, I'll just put 25 points for now. And I'll say create group, okay. And then I'll say add questions. And so my question one is just an essay question that I created on the fly. And my question two is a group of three questions that it's going to select one randomly. So even though these, these questions are very much the same, um, they're different enough where I don't have to worry about students giving another student the answer because um, more than likely they'll get a different question one. Okay. And if you wanted to create the question group first, you can go ahead and do that too. You just click new question group. Okay. And I'll call this question three. And I'm going to pick one question and I'll just put another 25 points here. Okay. And then you can link to the question bank. So if you wanted to do pretty much the same thing I just did, but do it the other way in reverse, basically make the question group first and then link to a question bank, you can do that. So I'm gonna choose chapter two, question two, select bank and then create group. Okay. And here's the same thing. The only problem is um, unlike the way I did it the first time, it's not actually showing me the questions, but it is telling me it's gonna be pulled from this bank. And if you click on here, it probably takes you to the bank, but to be, I'm gonna save it just to be safe. Okay, now click on it. Uh, no, it didn't, it just took me back to the preview screen. Okay. Well, anyway, but it, it's doing the same thing as question two, except because I created the question group first, I'm pulling from the bank. It is not um, showing me the questions right here but accomplishes the same thing. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much how you would create a quiz. And since I've already saved it, okay, it takes me to the summary here. You can preview the quiz. Okay, so if you hit preview, this is what the quiz is gonna look like. So my question one is my essay question I created on the fly. My question two is one of the three from the uh, question bank that I created. And then for question three, um, it's one of the three from that other question bank uh, that I created for question two um, that, um, that they can answer and then submit the quiz. Now, since this is just a preview, submitting the quiz isn't gonna do anything. If you wanted to take the quiz as an actual student, you can go into the student view but before you do that, you have to make sure that the quiz is published because when you're in student view, it's as if you're an actual student. So you will only see it as a student if your students can see it. So for instance, if I click on student view here, it will say not yet available. Okay, so I have to leave the student view and I can publish it. Okay, now my course isn't yet published, so I don't have to worry about the students actually seeing this. Um, but it, but now I, at least I could go into student view and take it. So I could do take the quiz. Okay. And oops, put my answers here. All right. And then I hit submit quiz. 
Okay. And what's great about this student, now this is what the students, you can actually see what the student's going to see uh, when they submit it. And notice I did have the students see their answers. So they can see their answers, right? And now what I can do is leave the student view. Okay. I could go to my grade book. Now the grade book is under grades. Okay. And this is the test student. And notice here it says quiz one. And um, I can click on this. this is, I have a submission under test student. I can hit this arrow to the right. And it will open up this panel on the right hand side. And I click on this link that says speed grader. And it will take me into the quiz where I can grade it. Now I'm the only one that took the quiz. So test students, the only one here, but if you have other students, you can just scroll through each of the student names and go in and see their, their answers, right? Put in your comments, put in how much they get, and then just hit submit so they can get their grade. Okay, so I can grade this. So well, it looks like my scoring's a little off, but whatever. So here we go. All right, so you update the score, All right? So this one got a 51, I hit submit. Okay, and then now I need to go back to the grade book, which means you have to click on this upper left, a link in the upper left here. And there's the grade there, okay? Now, and, and notice here, okay, this is, well, this is, I'm glad I went into this. Notice I have all, it actually includes all of the groupings that I made. So I have in-class assignments, homework, quizzes, exams. Quizzes are 30% of the grade. Uh, it's 100% because I only put 51 points on that quiz and it even calculates it into the total. And so everything will get automatically calculated. Now, let's say you, you say, you know what? Um, I want to change some things on that quizzes. I took it as a student and there's a few things I want to change before I actually give it to my students. Um, what you can do is if you go into quiz one and go into student view again, if you reset the student, okay, it basically resets that student and you leave the student view. And now as if the student never took the quiz. So you go back to the grade book and notice, right? No longer does test student have a uh, submission for quiz one. So I love this feature of, of Canvas. It's something that Blackboard didn't have. Um, Blackboard, I think you actually had to have a student account to go and experience the class as a student, but, uh, but not here. Okay, so there's a question. Um, can you choose to grade all quiz one and then move all quiz two, et cetera? Um, do you mean, Kevin, do you mean in the, Oh, all of the question one. Uh, yeah, you can do that, but you just have to remember to uh, just, you may have to remember to save it, right? Because if you, if you go to the next student, I don't know if it saves the grade for the first. So let's say you graded question one for student one, and then you click next student. Um, I don't know if it will save it until you hit that save button. Um, the other thing you'd have to be careful about for that is if you do do it that way, you don't, you want to make sure the student won't see just the grade for question one and think that they got 25% on that. Um, so if you do that, then you may want to, uh, in the, in the quiz settings, right. Um, do not show the grades. Let's see. Um, oh, where is that? See their quiz responses. I think that there is a way to hide it. You may, yeah, there's a way here. Hmm. Great posting policy. 
Grace will auto, okay, manually, Grace will be hidden. Okay, change the, yeah, you may wanna change this. Sorry, I got a lot of windows here. Grace will be hidden by default. Make sure you do that too, right? So what I did is in the grade book, I clicked on the three dots and in the grade posting policy, you may wanna hide the grade by default. So this way, if you are doing question by question, and let's say you only grade question one, and then they go in, they won't see 25%, right? That makes sense. So, um, so if you do that, I think that will help. And then you can do question by question. Okay, sure. Okay, so, um, so that basically it for quizzes and assignments. And again, just make sure your quiz and assignments are in the right place. And then what we can do now is go into modules. And by the way, it looks like the student can see the modules today. Yesterday, they couldn't see it for some reason. It wasn't letting me see it as a student, but now it's there. Okay, and now what we can do is we can pull in those assignments. So I'm gonna to go to weeks two and three, click the plus sign. And now the assignments that you created will appear here in the add item dialog. So I'm gonna put chapter one, lecture one. I'll add that and I'll move that up here to the in-class assignment and I'll increase the indent so it's easier to read. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and go to my quiz and I'll add my quiz one. And since I'm not using the quiz, this one, I'll delete, remove this. Okay, and I'll increase this indent. All right, and that's it. So now for my first week, I have my assignment, I have my quiz. Now the homework and the readings and the objectives uh, all come from the MindTap that I created for this course, that third party platform. So I, I've, I'm a bit out of time today. So what I'll do is I'll move that to tomorrow. So tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll show if you use um, McGraw-Hill or uh, Connect, or if you use Pearson, MyLab, or if you use Mind, Cengage, MindTab, I think there's a few others too. Uh, tomorrow, what I'll show is how you can integrate that into your Canvas course and copy those assignments over and use those um, and, and what I do is I put the deep links in my Canvas course, so they just click on the link and it opens it up right in MindTap, which is really nice. Okay, so uh, are there any questions on what I went over today? Okay, how would you set up a bonus quiz, like a syllabus quiz? Okay, so um, that's a good question. Um, I actually, um, where it is optional, okay. Is, is this a, a quiz, that's, so it's not gonna be graded, Kevin, or is it graded? Because I give a syllabus quiz as well, um, but I make it graded for everyone. Uh, but only for bonus points. Okay, that is a good question. Can you, yes, oh, okay, uh, Michelle, yes, you can. So um, in terms of the bonus points, you know, I'm not sure exactly if, if, if you can do that. I'd have to check on that. There's a couple options. Uh, okay. That, that we would use. Um, one is that you can assign it to individuals, but you're saying they can choose on their own to do it. So sometimes what I would do is um, you can go and do a assignment and you don't have to apply a zero to that grade. Meaning that if you just leave it blank, it would not go against their uh, average. Um, that was the, the normal easiest way to do it. Um, and then you would just mark as, hey, this is bonus. This is not assignment that you have to do. Um, but that being said, I would get tired sometimes and just start putting zeros everywhere and it would mess it up. Um, there is another, there is, there was a bonus assignment at some point in Canvas, but I, I didn't see it when you were going through it. So I'm assuming that is now gone or moved over to something else. 
um, as well. So those are those are the options that I would use because we had some bonus like like a syllabus quiz and things of that nature as well. Great, and and uh, and um, if if you wanted to make it optional, like you were saying, Chris, where mm -hmm. you know if they they just simply wouldn't get a grade. Um, yes. Yeah, just make sure, right? You wouldn't want to. Now this is by default off, but you can also where it says automatically apply grade for missing missing submissions. So if you want to give missing submissions zero, right? You want to make sure you would turn that off. Yeah. Right, in your grade book. Yeah, that's a new option that we didn't have at the time because we oh, you had okay. to go in automatically and, and put a zero in for each thing on a student. Um, oh, okay. Annually. So. Yeah, and you still have to do that, but if, if you wanted to automatically, this is a setting you'd have to set up, and this is part of the gradebook settings. Um, yeah, in terms of dropping the lowest grade, uh, that's another nice thing about those categories or assignment groups. If we go back into the assignments, and um, if you click on a specific, uh, so my in-class assignments, for example, if I click on the three dots, and oh, where is, or maybe, yeah, and then, okay, is it edit? Yep, here it is, okay. So you click on the three dots and you click on edit and you can say where it says number of scores to ignore. You can say drop the one lowest score or drop the two or three lowest scores, or you can even ignore the highest scores. You can also decide, you know, maybe this particular assignment you'll never drop. Uh, you can add that there too. Uh, this is a really uh, a good nice feature also that I don't remember being in Blackboard. Uh, I know you can drop the lowest in, in, in Blackboard, but um, in terms of the never drop, I think that's something that I didn't, don't remember seeing. But yeah, you just do that. So I actually do that for my homework, but I don't do it for the other groups. So I would just go into homework and say edit and which well it doesn't look like it's there because i don't have any assignments in there yet but when i added assignments and i can just say drop the lowest one so okay yeah and i'll, I'll look for that um that bonus quiz i mean um you know like chris said it was there once upon a time maybe it still is there but i'll i'll, I'll take a look and then also, um, I'll look into that converting of the quizzes too, from classic to new. Um, I guess really quickly, um, I'll show um, the new quiz just so you can see how it's different. So if I add a quiz and if I decide to do a new quiz, okay. So you can see even the settings page here is a little bit different. I'll call this new quiz one. Um, and we'll put in quizzes. You can just still do display grade as points. Okay. Um, interesting, we have a submission type here for the new quiz. So Will, I know you asked about this, but it doesn't let me change the submission type. So that's odd. Okay. And I haven't really looked at it much, but I just found a resource uh, that I community.canvas. Um, they had a, a, a listing on how to migrate a Canvas quiz to the new quizzes format. Um, uh, I, okay. And I, I don't know, new, new quizzes wasn't around when I was using it. So I'd have to yeah. go over it too. Yeah. I mean, this is, as you can see, it's completely different. So here's my new quiz. Um, remember, I was talking about question banks, how the pools from Blackboard come over as question banks. And new quizzes, they're called item banks. And you'll notice that um, they don't have my question banks here. Um, so I would have to create a new set of, of, of um, items in my item bank. So that's, the, it's, I'm sorry, I was saying it's not very compatible with what we had in Blackboard. Um, if I add a question, right, these are the different questions that I can put in here. So if I choose essay, right, I put in the question title here and okay, option. Okay, so here's my question. This is an essay question. 
Okay, the rich content editor will give them an area to answer the question. Um, I guess you can set word limits, set word counts. You can have a spell check. So these are things that I don't think you were getting with the with the classic. Um, there is a way to to put in the correct. And you can add it to an item bank. Um, oh, here it is. I think this is it. Yeah, so if I click on that message bubble there, notice I could put a correct answer and I could put an incorrect answer in here. And here's where I can provide general feedback regardless of answer. This is really all you're getting with the classic quiz, where the new quiz you can actually put in the correct and incorrect and have that option to show them. So there are some advantages of this new quiz, but like I said, the classic quiz is what your Blackboard quiz is going to come over as. And if you can convert it to this, uh, I'm not sure, but as Chris, Chris mentioned, there may be a way because it looks like it's in the community. Oh, okay, here we go. So here's a link. Migrate, use a new quiz, okay. Quizzes. Okay, so all right, so it looks like we have a migrate button. Oh, looks easy enough. Let me try it. Okay, so let me cancel this. Let me go back to my. This is kind of weird too. Sometimes you lose the menu um, in Canvas. It's like they put up this new quiz tool, and now I lost my. Hmm. Oh, here it is, return. There's a return button on this page. Okay. All right, so let me do that. Let me go to quiz one. And it's a migrate option, okay. Migrating quiz one. Oh, there it is. No, there is a different icon. The new quiz has a, has a black rocket ship, whereas the, um, the old quiz has a um, uh, white or transparent one. Okay, so let me click on this one. Let's see how it did. Um, it doesn't have a questions tab, so I guess I have to go into build to see the questions. Okay, good, there's my first essay. This is my second one. Max number of bank questions exceeded. This bank contains zero questions. Okay, so huh, but it was okay for this one. One question will be pulled from this bank, quiz one, question two, but for my third one, it says max number of question banks exceeded. I don't know why I would say that. Okay, here's my random. It kept my number of questions. It took my, okay. It looks like this is all allows me to edit here though. I can't actually go into the question to edit it. I wonder if it created a question bank. Or actually, would it be an item bank at this point? That link I had, uh, and that's where I didn't really understand, is it said it created an item bank instead of a question bank. Right, so the item bank, yeah. Um, so what I would need to do then is go into my settings, and I'd have to make that item bank menu option available, because I took it off yesterday. So I'll put it here. I'll save it. Okay, here's my item banks. They have essay questions, but this is not, no, these are the questions that I created manually. So it doesn't look like it has it. Huh. 
It doesn't have that item bank. Um, let me see, is there a way to preview this quiz? There should be in the, uh, well, I was gonna say in the top right corner is usually where, it, if I remember what it was at. Nope, that ain't it. I remember there was a way to like see it as a student. Well, I could probably do that if I publish it. And then if I go into, let me go to my assignments tab. There it is. Oh, no, okay. So created under migrated quizzes. So I'll have to move this here. Okay. Where's my student button? Maybe go to the home page. Yeah, it's there, but I was I was able to get this in the other place before. Okay, so what I'll need to do then is go back to my modules and let me put it in here. Okay, so there's the other quiz one. Okay, now let me go in as student and click on the second one. And let's see how this problem with this assessment Please contact your instructor. Yeah, it's almost like it. It seems to me that the, um, the the pool question didn't get converted properly. Right, the question bank did not become an actual item bank. Invalid item. Students will not be able to take this assessment until they are resolved. It has a problem with question three, even though. They're doing the same thing, right? Question two, pick one randomly from this bank. And question three says pick one randomly from this one. But here says max number of question banks exceeded. The bank contains zero questions. So it's almost as if because I imported the bank after I created the group, when I did the classic quiz, it didn't import the questions. And this question, I actually imported the bank first and created a group from that. So I'm just gonna delete this one. Dr. Miles made a good point. Didn't you only have one question for that uh, to choose from? So yes. it may be three questions in the bank to choose from before it'll allow it to run its course, I guess is what I'm, yeah. Yeah, but I did that for both questions. So I, so for instance, when I went into the quiz as a student in the classic, it, they behaved the same way. Because in question two, I selected one from three. In question three, I selected one from three. The only thing that was different is how I set it up. When I set up the quiz for question two, I imported the question bank and created the group when I did the import of the question bank. For question three, I did the group first, right? And then linked to the question bank. Other than that, um, there wasn't much difference. But let me see now if it looks any different here. Okay, begin. But another thing I didn't like is when I tried to edit it, I couldn't see my questions. Okay, so here it has the question. That's good. It looks like it chose it at random. Interesting, it says auto grading. I don't think it's really auto grading since it's um, essay question. Leave student view. Something went wrong. Oh. All right. Well, it has some glitches. It's not. It's not perfect. Um, Hopefully, if you do multiple choice questions, it'll be a little different. It likely became I know, bank at one question. You can't pick another one. It could be, yeah, I don't know. Um, the group, that, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's how I set it up. But, but again, I mean, 
a perfect world that would have both worked and um, it, it didn't. So, but maybe, you know, like I said, if you're doing multiple choice questions, it's probably more straightforward. Um, because, because these two engines are completely different. One has the question banks, one has the item banks. You know, I showed you how setting up the essay questions are different. Um, you know, one just has feedback, the other one you could put correct and incorrect answers. So, oops, it shows the wrong. Um, but anyway, I, I think with my quizzes, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the classic, um, because, um, it seems to keep the question banks there and I could modify it because it doesn't look like I can do that here. The only downside is, like I said, I can't reference the correct answer, but okay, it says randomly pull from this bank. And if I click on that, it says randomly select one, that's good. But I can't see the questions. And there's a button to item banks here. And if I click on that, it doesn't exactly show that item bank. Even though it has a name, quiz one, question two, dash one, it's not showing here. Now I can look a little bit more into this to see what's going on, but. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? All right. So I'll go ahead and end it here. Uh, again, I'll look a little further into this to see um, um, if there's a way I can get into my item bank that was once a question bank and, uh, and work from here. And then um, I'll look into the couple other things too that you asked about and hopefully have some answers tomorrow. So yeah, so tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, yeah, so um, now I don't use WebAssign, but I do use Cengage's MindTap. And I've also used my lab in the past and they're very similar in terms of the integration. So hopefully WebAssign will be very much the same. And what I'll do is I will link to a MindTap course and show how that integration works. And I'll pull in some assignments from there. Okay. All right, thanks everyone.